Good evening. What's going on there, guys? It is the Earthmaster here on this uh, beautiful Friday evening party night. If you feel like partying, party it up. It is September 24, 2021, about 7.30 p.m. California time, where we hit 102 degrees today. I'm tired of it. I'm seriously tired of it. It's driving me crazy. Anyway, what's going on, folks? A 4.2, the latest quake on the globe in the northern South America range. Let's go ahead and check out what's going on here on the uh, map on the USGS. We got a lot to talk about here tonight, including some uh, major trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone. We're talking about some major trimmer. So let's look at the activity up here in the northern part of South America region in the Columbia area. It looks like 4.2. Pretty deep movement into this region here, well below these mountains at 146, uh, 146 kilometers below the surface. Looks like uh, right around the uh, Columbian Trench area. Well inland though, definitely well inland. We have seen some further movement along the Middle American Trench where that uh, kind of larger earthquake struck. Off the coast here uh, a few days ago, we've seen some aftershock activity, including uh, quite a few fours and some further movement up north here. Uh, off the coast of Guatemala, a pretty deep earthquake movement taking place along the Middle American Trench gonna watch that area pretty closely even though we had some major movement still possible to see some further activity kicking up in that region off the coast of uh, Baja California 4.5 into the Pacific close to the Gulf of California along that uh, fracture zone uh, right there in in that area looking at the activity into the northern uh, North American plate here into the states United States looks like activity ramping up Throughout parts of California and Nevada, also into Oklahoma and Texas. These are 2.5 and above magnitudes. Let's go ahead and bring the all magnitudes in here. And we'll check out what's going on here. Check out this activity at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault. Okay. Oh, Lucy. Lucy, where are you? Okay, so we're getting a little bit of movement. Nothing to fear monger yet. Um, I, I, I don't fear monger, but nothing to fear uh, at this moment, but w if we start to see a little swarm act out here on the southern end of the Sandra's fault Then no doubt it's not fear-mongering, but uh, realistically a, a heightened sense of uh, potential in this region But uh, for now just a couple small earthquakes at the southern end including this 1.5 that struck uh, right off the Brawley seismic zone very close to the Sandra's fault this one up here, a 1.1 struck directly on the San Andreas Fault, the southern end. We haven't seen too much activity here, folks. We don't want to see too much activity on that branch of the sun, uh, of the uh, San Andreas Fault. That it would not be good. Because when this baby unleashes, when this baby unleashes, we are talking about millions of people being displaced down in the Southern California region. And who knows how far up uh, north this uh, unzipping uh, would take place here along the, uh, the uh, San Andreas Fault. Uh, movement around the Anza section here along the San Jacinto Fault area still continuing today. Uh, looks like about nine earthquakes or so within the vicinity of the Baldy Mountain area off the San Jacinto Fault area, the Thomas Mountain Fault. Been watching this movement here for a few days now uh, in the microquake department. So just overall, a lot of movement here in Southern California including some uptick around the Ridgecrest area. Look at that activity southeast of Ridgecrest, very close to the Garlock Fault Zone. This area right here is no joke either. I, I kind of think if this one were to have a big quake, we could no doubt see a trigger uh, here along the San Andreas Fault. So we don't want to see that happen. Uh, so a little bit of movement southeast of Ridgecrest, uh, kind of more southerly, if you will, than the uh, normal aftershock sequences from... Uh, couple years ago the July 4th July 5th sequence of earthquakes this activity south much further south of the uh, main fracture zone that took place on those days uh, nothing significant but man there's definitely a multitude of quakes in that area very close like I said to the Garlock fault structure sheer fault uh, some further movement along the ridge the uh, Nevada area northwest of Tonopah through the Candelaria Hills you can see that well-defined fracture area uh, that struck uh, there was six pointer that struck out there last year 
I think in early last year uh, that uh, kind of kicked off, uh, well, it's still continuing uh, earthquake activity, aftershock sequences in this region. Also, Mono Lake still showing quite a bit of movement. There's a lot of ancient volcanic activity here in this region. Um, not saying this is strictly volcanic. It's pretty shallow. Uh, some of this activity looking at uh, very surface type um, qualities here with 0.1, 0 kilometers. A lot, of, a lot of this movement very shallow around the Mono Lake area. And also here, a little separate earthquake swarm on the California or the uh, Nevada side, looks like. Um, and this activity somewhat shallow as well. But uh, we're seeing all these little swarms pop up in, uh, in some odd areas. So we're kind of watching that, seeing what's going on there. Also some further movement around the Antelope Valley area, stretching throughout the southwest part of where the swarming activity has occurred uh, in a line of activity. You can see some of this movement here uh, relatively eh, not super deep, not super shallow. It looks like about four to five kilometers below the surface, right around the area where we'd see magma moving, uh, underground magma movement, but uh, not 100% not, not certain. This is indeed magma movement, but we are seeing a lot of activity around areas where we've seen um, historic volcanic activity. I'm talking like prehistoric times, uh, including Long Valley Super Volcano. So something to watch pretty closely. Also a little swarm outside of uh, Reno around the Carson Range. A couple of small microquakes up here in the, uh, in the uh, Mount, uh, what is that? Carson Range, Davis Meadow area. Just a few quakes. Uh, looks like at about nine kilometers below the surface. Pretty uh, deep movement there in that region. Also another earthquake. <laughs> We're still seeing activity here, folks, along the southern end of the Sandres or the uh, uh, Cascadia subduction zone. And uh, this one pretty deep as well, about 18 kilometers uh, below the surface. Pacific Northwest has been relatively quiet, folks. We're looking at uh, overall an increase in this region over the last couple days and I have a strong feeling it's because of the increase in the trimmer along the Cascadia subduction zone in the southern end. A lot of movement down into the southern end of, of the uh, Cascadia um, and the North American plate at play here. So uh, it's some interesting activity taking place let me tell you. Let's go ahead and cover Yellowstone real quick key up the uh, Yellowstone overview map here and uh, no doubt some earthquake activity throughout the day some of these earthquake distant uh, distant signatures showing up over the last couple hours looks like things have been calming down there was a little bit of swarming activity in the Madison area you can see some of that localized earthquake there and also a couple small microquakes over the last few hours but uh, still kind of watching that. It has not died down completely there at Yellowstone uh, National Park. The inner part of the uh, United States here, down around the Southern Plains, Oklahoma, still getting in on some movement and also further uptick here in the Pecos, Texas area. This movement here been ongoing for quite some time, including a 3.3 earthquake and all this activity occurring roughly around six to eight kilometers below the surface in a linear type range here from west to east. You can see that movement taking place there. 110 earthquakes within this region of Texas over the last week. And uh, it's continuing into this day. Uh, what else we got here? We did have that uh, pretty good sized earthquake early this morning, 6.1 in the Aleutian Trench area, 39 kilometers below the surface for that earthquake and also uh, a little bit of movement south of Tokyo, Japan region. Pretty deep earthquake into the Philippine plate. Looks like a four at 405 kilometers for that 4.2. Some deep earthquake activity right there. Also down south of the Philippines, you can see uh, a little bit of further movement into the Indonesia area, 5.3 striking in that area. And some further deep movement, deep, I'm talking deep, no doubt, 547 kilometers. That's way, that's way down there, folks. That's just not skimming the surface. That's just strictly way down there. 547 kilometers for 
and we had one at 519 kilometers below surface for that 4.2. Let's go ahead and check out the trimmer activity into the Pacific Northwest, folks. I think you'll be pretty, uh, pretty uh, in awe about this. Check out this, right? It doesn't, it doesn't look like a lot, but this is highly concentrated, large amount of trimmer. We're talking about 553 epicenters of trimmer today into the southern end of the Cascadia. Two separate trimmer areas, with Northern California and one into the uh, Southern Oregon area. And this has been ongoing for a few days now. Okay, so we got 543 today. Yesterday, we had 350 within that, ep within that same region. The day prior to that, on the 22nd, further activity, 272. So let's get let's get a tally over the last week or so um, into that region. What do we got here? About ten days, eleven days or so of activity. Oh wow! So look at look at the rest of the Cascadia subduction zone. There's nothing, no trimmer, right? So we're looking at completely locked areas, right? We're looking at further locked areas, but this activity right here, you got, you got to remember that the Juan de Fuca plate subducting underneath the North American plate here. We're getting pressure creating this subduction, right? It just doesn't float freely underneath the North American plate. It, it, it needs pressure to subduct. So that pressure, no doubt, highly increasing over the last 10 days in this area. And what happens when you get a lot of trimmer in this region, a lot of, a lot of, uh, of uh, subduction quakes, you get buildup of surface pressure up here along the lock section of the Cascadia, folks. We haven't seen a tremendous amount uh, in the way of, of release of pressure or earthquake activity in this region of the Cascadia. A couple twos, right? We look at the last uh, uh, seven days of 2.5 and above, and yes, no doubt, seen a couple twos kicking off down there around 20 kilometers or so, about the region of where we would see some uh, earthquake activity taking place. But you gotta think about what's happening up here, folks. Kinda like a, uh, I can't say a rubber band because it doesn't, Cascadia is unlike anything, uh, definitely not like a rubber band. But uh, let me tell you, there's some major pressure building up here in this region. Trimmers, yes, they are very, um, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? They happen. Trimmers happen along the Cascadia quite often. But in this specific area like this, at days on end, not too often. Yes, we do see the uh, um, the trimmer activity up here every 14 months or so around Seattle, where we kind of get a reverse fact, uh, uh, reverse action of the uh, dynamics of the subduction in this region and that lasts for a month or so. But we're not talking about up there. We're talking about down here. This is not reversing. This is continuing to dive down underneath the North American plate, the Juan de Fuca plate. So ultimately pressure building up here in this region, folks. So just be on guard. There's a lot of movement uh, taking place there on, along that Cascadia. So I think we should all be paying close attention to that region. Some further movement on the sun as well. Look at all these sunspots kicking up, facing towards us. Uh, quite a bit of movement, including some new sunspots. All these facing the Earth side right now. There's quite a few folks. There's a large number of sunspots currently facing the Earth side or facing the Earth. Looks like uh, right now, this was a little bit elevated last night. Right now, only a 50% chance of sea flare with a 5% uh, chance of M flare. M flare. There was a little uh, solar flare that popped off uh, down around this region. I think it was about, about a 3.5. Uh, M3, I believe it was. I can't remember exactly, but uh, that was way, way earlier this morning, if not late last night. 
but uh, any, any of these can pop off at any time. Looks like over the next few days here, we're looking at a pretty uh, substantial amount of potential when it comes to geomagnetic storming at the uh, not only the higher latitudes, but possibly the mid latitudes with a uh, 40% chance of uh, uh, the aurora up there in the mid latitudes on September 27th with a G2 class storm, pretty significant. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Have a great Friday evening. There's a lot going on here. Uh, and I think the North American plate, the South American plate, or the uh, this whole area in between here is there's a lot going on here, folks. We need to pay, pay very close attention to the West Coast, definitely. <clears throat> All right, enough babbling. We will chat you guys a little bit later. Stay safe out there, guys. Have a good night.